it's not too important. Whatevs. I love the fact that this is like this goofy little shape, but on the other hand, it's so difficult to actually like. Can I interest you in hot dogs or a spaceship key? Yeah, we can buy a couple of those. Yeah, like the fact that they just give you infinite money, and like it's not infinite. You could run out, but like there's so much of it, it's very difficult to do that. It's very strange. Alright. Sorry for the abrupt cut. So we now have... Let me check what all we have. We have 200 across the board, which I... Is that all of them? I, I can't remember. I hope it's all of them. Um, and also, this is a... <laughs> this is almost difficult to even, like, mention, but we just bought a spaceship key and we flew to the moon. Uh, and we're actually coming up on the end of the game. This is one of those things where it's like, the way that this game is placed, uh, paced, rather, is just, it's kind of all over the place. Because <laughs> it has a pretty, pretty typical, um, like, JRPG thing. Like, you even get a boat and an airship like you do in the JRPGs. Um, but it just has this very intentional, like, removal of, this is what the moon looks like, by the way. The moon may or may not be the homeland of the Waynes and Gibby. You can see iconography that kind of looks like Wayne's head. Um, but yeah, what the moon actually is is kind of unclear and confusing because it appears to just be where Gibby's palace is. And in the palace is forbidden, leave now or be destroyed. And you can see that these guys also kind of have Wayne heads. It could be that they are wearing something where like a Wayne's head was like taken um like where they not like lost their head but they or no like yeah like they 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 cut the head off of a Wayne and turned it into a helmet you crushed it accidentally so now that strength that Wayne has been building all game has finally come to a head and we can now blow through all these guys I don't actually does this give me meat I have four meat. Doesn't give me more meat. That's okay. The Simmery Axe. I don't know what that even means. Maybe it means shimmery? Inflicts electrobiological damage. It is better, so I guess I'll put it on. Juice pack. So yeah, this is a thing where like Castigate below the art. Manifest amidst below hers. Where like they wanna they want you to have this cool moment, and so like we've now gotten so strong that these enemies who are theoretically tough we can just blow through. The problem is that we haven't I don't think we've seen these enemies elsewhere in the game. But now we're going through them just with the arrow keys. Like, we're not doing this. We're not hitting a button to kill. But yeah, it might be kind of cool to, like, see them... See, like, other enemies, but, like... We get these things, and then we get the tomb shrubs, and we get clawmen. And, like, that's cool and all, but, like, those were bosses, and I don't even know how much of that I can appreciate. Oh, yeah, the Cone Cultists have a cult. I don't really know what they're worshipping, though. All right, Black Crystal. So, uh, this is the final boss. You may have seen him on the, uh, on the intro screen. You dare approach me? My vessels will digest your truth until you beg me to caress... Whatever that means. Now, soak thine augmented concavity. It is sort of the last time you will. Um... That's just one of those things where it's like, <laughs> hey, game's still randomized. So this flame, this is flame. 
So one of the weird things is, is that we don't even have the juice to use this more than once. But it is a strong ability, but it's random. But that is what you get for having the... The Sage. Um... Cool. Yeah, this is the final boss. It's one of those things where it's like, it's almost kind of weird. Um, because, like, the game is structured in such a way where, like... You know, it has a it has a setup, it has a build, but like, in part, to blame from the um, in part to blame because of the uh, the system where things are randomized, it's actually kind of difficult for us to even like identify what the hell's going on, and like you might just do things because well you do them I guess you know. Um, and it's kind of a shame, because I think that there is a cool story here. I've been talking here and there about, like, how I'm pretty sure that there's a story, and I think that there's a story, and, like, what I think the story in question is. Cool. But it's just difficult to parse, and, like, it's a shame, because there's a lot of cool in this game. Oh. Well, there you go. There's Legend of Melting for you. So this is weird. We get XP here. And we actually level up to level 63. I think just because with the default RPG Maker adjustment for leveling, um, we literally just get 63 levels worth of XP when you hit the 9 key 6 times, which is, I think, how much we got. Um... So I am defeated. Wayne, I'm sorry about everything. So, the fact that... This is, this is another thing. Datasmold does not know Wayne when they meet. He introduces himself as Datasmold. And the same is true for Pungorma. But Samsnosa does know Wayne. She says, oh, hey, Wayne. And she doesn't feel the need to introduce herself as Samsnosa. Because Wayne and she know each other. And, and Gibby did not really get introduced to Wayne, but he says, Wayne, I'm sorry about everything, as though they have a history or something? Which is another one of those things that makes me think, do they have a history? Gasp, wheeze. By the way, I set the moon to explode when I die. Say your prayers and thumb your creatures. Like mirror tyranny. Um, so yeah, and then when Gibby explodes, he actually goes in all these little pieces. Um, and it's from these, like, gooey little pieces that we have to stop him from being put back together in the next game. But yeah, this is another thing. This planet appears to be Earth, but you can see that, like, a chunk has been taken out of it or something? You can see it as it turns. Um, Orwain, joyful, blatantly adrift, rescues the furnace far beyond the forbidden manable apparel. Um, presumably this is just a recap of like, and then Wayne saved everyone, uh, deep in space. So yeah, Gibby being the king of the moon, it's unclear why he has dominion over the moon. Um, it's also unclear why he doesn't go to the afterlife. Amidst the rays of radiant Spanishes ostensibly, or can my vacuum hark below products? So ends the tale of the hideous furnaces, who sought to hark, or sort of accidentally harked, their pain. Alright. Uh, the ship we bought has crash-landed on this fellow, who is telling us to not flip this lever. If you remember. Here's his chair, and there's him. And presumably, that animation was made and then played backwards. But yeah, um... But yeah, that's sort of the thing. Like, we don't really have a good cohesive ending here. We don't we don't really get that. Um, just because the game is so strange. I would have liked a longer ending cutscene. But again, we got that in Hylix 2. The one of the weird things about Hylix 2 is that like 
Hylix 2 is almost built in such a way to... Oh, yeah, we can give the horse food. I don't know if we ever did that. Can I? Hylix 2 is built in such a way where you can really just start there. And a lot of people did. Because, like, that's like a real game. This is, you know, a almost a vanity project made in RPG Maker. Horf? Give horse food. Acquired horse. Whatever the hell that means. Increases chance of preemptive attack, raises mightiness by 20 points. So yeah, wow. That's Hylix, everyone. I'm happy to have replayed it. Um, it is still a very strange game, as I was saying. Like, it's kind of like you would expect... Um, Hylix 2 to be like a new how do I put this a lot of people went into Hylix 2 and they were like I'll just start here and you really don't miss much besides the fact that like there was a Wayne before and he did things but that's explained pretty quickly in Hylix Jabsimith oh hey uh, this all got re-randomized again Yeah, Mangear the Mutant City. The mountain was called something else when I first went there. Was it you? Um. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this game where, like, it's almost difficult to think about it as, like, a real game, because, like, you know, there's a lot of silly stuff in here. The, the stuff that, like, isn't really game ruining, but, like, the fact that money is is barely a consideration and then later on they just give you a million dollars and they're like, don't worry about it. And they mean it. Um, And then, yeah, there's no post-game either, which is unfortunate. Um, because, like, I would really like for... In Hylix 2, it was revealed that, like, Gibby is the source of everyone's random ge generated dialogue. And the fact that they still have that random generated dialogue here after Gibby's death and the moon blew up, which you'd think would do something, it's just a limit of the game. You're really supposed to start, uh, stop playing the second you see the end, you know? But unfortunately, that's not the case. But yeah, um, it's a very... I'm going to save it here because it's like I'm sleeping. It's a very simple game. It's a very good game as well. It's very basic. I'll happily admit that. But it doesn't really need to be much more than what it is. And that's fine. Um, it's a good game. Just end of story, you know? I had fun playing it. I hope you had fun watching it. Um, ugh. And now I, uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll leave you here. Um, I've been Alfred. This has been Hylix. Uh, this is now the third time I am playing this game. <laughs> um, I will probably want to replay Hylix too soon. Um, I might do something again like this where I. I just record it in one big burst, technically in one medium burst and then one big burst and then cut it down to size. Um, but I really enjoyed having the, the border here. I, I really liked that. Um, and I also like having a little cut in for my face. Um, but yeah, this is Hylix. I'm also partially playing this just because like, I wanna put some sizzle up for Hylix 3. I'm gonna replay Hylix 2 before 3 comes out or at least before I replay 2, but. Or before I play three, I'm going to replay two. Um, but yeah, that's the LP. I have squeezed, I think, as much... I think as much content as I can out of it. All right, sorry, my wife just got home. I'm happy about that, don't worry. Um, but yeah, I think I've squeezed as much content as I could really possibly get out of Hylix. I don't really know what more I could do here. 
I have done a full raw playthrough. Um, I have done a long play without audio, without my audio at least. Um, I have done this where I come in with the hindsight of Hylix 2 and some of the spoiler stuff for Hylix 3. And I also have come here post watching like Harry but Harry's, it's Harry but Harry, right? Let me just double check. I love this guy. I love his content. Um, everyone should go subscribe to him. Harry Bud Harry. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago from my time, he made a video about the new Hilux 3 stuff, which almost everyone on his channel has seen. Um, and then he did three Hilux Iceberg videos. He did a video looking at the Hilux 2 trailer to see what was cut out of the game. Um, he looked at cut content for Hilux 1 uh, twice, and then he did a full playthrough for Hilux 1. Um, so yeah, if you would like to see stuff going on for Hilux there. Hello, dear. Are you, are you just recording in the open? No, I'm recording the outro. I'm done, in fact. Oh. I know. Um, and then Mason Lindroth, uh, I believe primarily uses Twitter to talk. You can follow him for high like stuff. And then also I think he uses Instagram live just because, you know, there's a reasonable amount of, of good infrastructure to support live streaming from Instagram. And he usually does it from his phone where he's just, Hey, here's the models, you know, and he records them like that. Um, but yeah, if you want to get into Hylix, watching those Instagram live streams, which I believe are recorded somewhere are good. Um, my LPs are, of course, a place for initially blind reactions, but now I'm coming in on the on the backside. Um, and then there's also Harry about Harry's videos and somebody, the, I'm blanking on the name now, but they made a, um, a video essay on the Hylix 2 RPG combat. But um, besides that, there's also the Hylix subreddit, which is probably the most updated place to get Hylix stuff. There has been variously a Hylix Discord. Um, because of the way that I record and because of the way that the Hylicorn is, I don't actually know if it's up right now. It may be up as I record this, but it won't be up when I... Uh, like, yeah, it, it may be up right now. But it may not be up when I actually upload this, but who even, who knows? Uh, but yeah, that's, that's Hylix. That's the first game, you know? It's only two hours long, and like, the speedrun for this game is like 14 or 15 minutes. Um, the second game is pretty short too, but that's everything. So, thank you again for watching me play Hylix for the third time. Um, I don't really intend to make this a habit. I don't want to go back and replay all my old LPs, but Hylix is very special to me. It's a lot of fun. So thank you for suffering through an indulgent, uh, a very self-indulgent, may I say, uh, let's play for me. Um, but yeah, that's everything. I've been Alfred. That's Rotrail Friedrich. I hope you have a good day. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>